Forests of eastern Africa contain many different types of primates. This video presents five species, three monkeys and two apes, providing comparisons of feeding, locomotion, communication, and social interaction. The first species covered is the vervet, Cercopithecus etiops, which is widely spread across Africa since it can survive both in thick forest and in the forest edge grassland habitat. Vervets can also adapt to the outskirts of human habitations, in city parks, around farms and campsites, where there is water, food, and access to trees to afford protection from predators. These relatively small animals, weighing from 7 to 10 pounds, or 3 to 4 kilograms, live in multi-male, multi-female social groups, which include adults, sub-adults, juveniles, and infants. They are one species of a widely ranging genus of small African monkeys, particularly noted for their species-specific facial colors, and are representative of one major type of old world monkey, the Circophytus sinai. They locomote very easily on the ground because of the similar lengths of their arms and legs, and their adaptable hands, which are used flat on the ground, but retain strong dexterous fingers, making it easy to grasp branches. They can also jump skillfully from one tree to the next and keep their balance on the swaying tree limbs. Their small size enables them to move out towards the ends of branches where fruit ripens and new leaves are found. Rivets must also share their range with other browsers and grazers. In their open country habitat, the grasses are eaten by herds of ungulates, such as hartebeests and impalas, which occur in great numbers. Giraffes compete for a major vervet food source, the upper leaves of acacia trees, which they can easily reach with their long necks. Elephants also strip leaves and branches from trees, as well as eating grass. In times of drought, they kill many trees by stripping their bark thus destroying resources which are vital for the monkeys. Elephants also use up a lot of water in drinking, washing, and playing, which reduces the amount available for other species. Vervets fit into the ecosystem by diversifying their diets, as well as where they forage. Because much of Africa has a tropical climate, fruit trees bear on a more irregular schedule than is the case in temperate areas. Flowering and fruiting are governed more by the rainfall pattern than temperature, and thus figs can be available at different times of the year. Figs are a favorite food source for many monkeys, particularly vervets. This female is foraging in a fig tree and is followed by her infant, who is old enough to locomote independently in the tree. Many animals and birds will eat figs, so the trees often produce a great many fruits so that some will be left to be the source of new trees. Vervets focus their diets on fruit and new leaves. Because they are not specialized as leaf eaters, they find the new leaves more nutritious and easier to digest than the mature leaves which the leaf eaters consume. The problem of nutrition and digestibility is particularly important for young animals just after they have been weaned because they are then responsible for finding enough to eat themselves. In non-provisioned troops, between one-third and one-half of the juveniles can starve to death at this stage. Other foods available are flowers and the insects which swarm around the ripening fruit. In drier climates, a very important food source is acacia trees. As well as leaves, in the dry season when other foods are scarce, vervets eat the bark and gum, which are both quite nutritious. They scrape these off using their incisor teeth. In drier climates, another source of food is the fleshy base of acacia thorns, which the vervets can carefully pull free and chew. This ability to harvest the protective devices of acacia thorn trees is part of the adaptation permitting vervets to live in such a wide range of habitat. In addition to trees, vervets also forage on the ground, searching through the leaf litter for seeds, 
roots, corms, insects, and any overlooked food item. Feeding is frequently interspersed with bouts of grooming and play by the younger animals. In learning to eat this varied diet, the infants must carefully observe older animals and often approach and sniff their mouths as if to ascertain what they are eating, which is called muzzling. This type of investigation is not always popular with other members of the troop. In the grassland area, vervets pluck and eat blades of grass, as well as digging for corms and roots. The grass blades represent an easily harvested resource, but roots and corms require quite a lot of effort to dig out, especially since the digger may be displaced by a higher ranking animal when the work is almost done. Once again, infants stay beside their mothers and watch them closely, even when they are not yet fully weaned. Some animals approach others to groom, as well as to feed by them. But it is clear that close proximity in feeding makes lower ranking animals nervous, and they may move away. Mothers who are lactating must eat not only for their own requirements, but to provide milk for their nursing offspring. They must also provide extra energy for infant care, which includes constantly carrying their infants and the other requirements of raising them. Acacia seed pods are a useful food resource because they are higher in protein than grass and will last longer under dry conditions. Vervet mothers have two major patterns of weaning. In one, they allow the infant a long period, up to 35 weeks of free access suckling, and then enforce an abrupt weaning, while the other pattern is to begin weaning slowly at a young age and occasionally refuse the nipple, thus encouraging the youngster to forage, so by 30 weeks the weaning is almost complete. Vervets eat insects as well as vegetation and can grab flies on the wing, as this one in the back is doing. Another factor of vervet feeding is the potential for loading many pieces of food into the cheek pouches and carrying them to a safer place for actual consumption. This female is rapidly putting food in her mouth and then carries it to a nearby termite mound, which is a favorite eating and sitting spot for vervets. Here they congregate, eat, groom, and socialize. Vervet females are usually very interested in infants and will often approach a mother and try to handle and inspect the baby. Young juveniles are also attracted to this activity. Often the infants struggle and vocalize, but the mothers are frequently very permissive about allowing others to interact with their infant. Once the struggling is over, this infant actually follows the second female and juvenile away from the mother. Developing social relations with other troop members is a very important aspect of a young animal's maturation. Males frequently protect the group, and this one threatens with a head bob, even though I am quite far away from the females and young. Sentry and defensive roles are very important because vervets have a lot of enemies. This male threatens me with an open mouth yawn, then monitors the level of danger I represent. He is between me and the rest of the group, which is the way that most vervet males protect the group. He then moves away to sit by a female and juvenile who are grooming. The male may be self-scratching to calm himself, or he may, in fact, now be far enough away from the camera to groom for hygiene. As the male approaches the grooming pair, the female leaves, 
and then the male grapples with the juvenile in a classic but